Hello my friends. I'm going to show you how I painted a mural in my dome ceiling. The ceiling is first primed with a sandable primer and then any flaws that are noticed are then patched with spackling compound and then after that dries it's reprimed. Re The ceiling is then painted all white with a satin or flat white paint. After this dries, then the top two-thirds of the dome is painted with a cobalt blue. And this is a standard stock item or stock color that's carried by Walmart. The lower portion is painted white and then the uh, brush is uh, drawn between the white and the blue in a zigzag motion and this is spreading the blue into the white and the white into the blue area. And then what I'm doing is uh, drying the brush out on a, a towel and uh, using the ends of the bristles to uh, feather brush the colors to blend them in to make the transition from the darker blue to the white. This gives the effect of uh, distance in towards the horizon. As you go towards the horizon, the uh, color uh, approaches the, a white and directly overhead would be the darkest color. And right here you can see I'm putting additional blue on because the blue paint is drying too rapidly. And then I'm uh, again zigzagging the blue into the white, drying the paint bristles, and then feathering with the tip of the brush to blend the colors in. I'm misting and then uh, mixing the paint some more. The larger clouds that I'm going to paint are going to be directly overhead and I kind of laid out where I want these clouds with uh, white dots on the ceiling. If you look closely you can see some dots scattered around uh, and directly overhead. Um, what I find is this uh, paint, the interior paint that you use, uh, pencil does not want to write onto it. So I have to do the drawing with the paint. So I made rough layout points uh, with some white dots on there. And I'm painting the clouds with three different shades. And all the shades, uh, the one looks like it's a gray, but actually it's a, a blue uh, a darker blue um, that has a red and yellow mixed with with it to give it the grayish tint and then I'm using the white and the medium gray I start with the medium color first and this does the base shape of the clouds and I'll go and do all the clouds with this first and then as you come lower on the uh, towards the horizon the clouds get closer together and much much smaller and that also gives you an effect of distance when you make these clouds make them uh, near the top puffy but the bottom is kind of a horizontal line the clouds that approach the horizon uh, you won't see the same puffiness. They will be um, a little more horizontal on the bottom and the top. Uh, do all your clouds with this first uh, uh, intermediate color. And uh, uh, once you get them all laid out, then you're going to start adding 
the uh, shadowing and the highlighting. It's good to back away from the scene, uh, possibly going down to the floor and checking at a distance to see that um, things are looking kind of natural. The smaller clouds that I'm adding towards the horizon, I'm making them somewhat lighter than the ones that are overhead and uh, kind of letting them blend more in to the white coloring of the sky at the distance. Next, I'm adding the shadowing, the shading underneath. I, I'm, with this, I'm starting at the undersides of the clouds and uh, trying to make shading to make the clouds look like they're puffs. Um, the uh, coloring, I used the blue and I mixed some uh, yellow and a little bit of red in there. And that gives uh, the shadowing or the look of a grayish color um, rather than trying to add some black which just darkens your blue. This gives it a much uh, warmer uh, color to it than just using a black as a shading. The shading starts giving the cloud some dimension. And what I want to do is have a imaginary light source directly overhead. So since we're working this uh, circle, all of the clouds on the underside are going to have the shading uh, at the bottom. And uh, then to give the light source, I'll then be highlighting on the top edges with the white. As I'm working these paints, uh, they are drying pretty quickly. So I'm misting the uh, paint so that I can blend it in and uh, have the paint uh, flow a little smoother. The white highlights I'm starting at the top of the clouds and I'm also using uh, the tip of the brush and a lot of the the brush is not really a stroke. I'm kind of jabbing with the bristles to give it a feather effect, feathery effect. And uh, this uh, kind of makes it a little more airy uh, and puffy looking. Using the white in the center of the cloud helps give it a three-dimensional effect. Uh, when you bring the white right up to uh, the darker shadow that's in the middle, um, it makes the uh, white puffs in the center of the cloud look a little more forward, uh, adding to that three-dimensional look.
what you should do before you start painting these clouds is go outside and spend a day cloud watching and see what the clouds are doing, how they're shifting, and uh, observe the shading and the coloring of the clouds. Um, I like the uh, bright overhead noontime uh, clouds. I have a scaffolding set up and a chair sitting on top of the scaffolding. So it's a pretty relaxing uh, position to be painting. I could not imagine standing on a stepladder and trying to do the same thing because there would be quite a few hours uh, working on this ceiling. I love the view of the northern woods and here I'm on the horizon I'm going to paint uh, a forest scene which is going to be uh, green with uh, a few of the autumn colors mixed into it. My brush of choice is a natural sponge. Um, it has a um, irregular surface so that as I'm using this I'm rotating the sponge and dabbing it. I don't want the sponge really loaded heavily with paint. I uh, apply the paint and then I dab it on a, a surface before it goes to the wall. Um, this uh, method here you want to be uh, applying it randomly and you want to have some of the areas projecting up to make it uh, look like that there are trees uh, closer and then some at a distance where it's uh, lower and uh, more horizontal. The first coat that I applied is a darker almost a dirty looking green. Then after this dries, I'm going to start uh, a green that has a little bit of a yellowish tint uh, to make the surface a little bit brighter. Then as a final coat, I'll highlight it with just a little bit of white uh, to make it look like the light is shining off of some of the leaves. I did add just a little bit of red onto some of these. This is a good start so far. There's a lot that can still be added to the scenery. Painting a mural is very relaxing and when you're finished it's very rewarding. Uh, the next thing that needs done is putting in uh, recessed lighting and that's hidden behind the uh, cove railing that's on the inside lip here. And right here you can see it's LED ribbon lighting that's uh, illuminating the dome. Recording. Hey. Lights on. Wonderful.
Thanks for watching, my friends. Bye-bye.